Thank you, Bill, for, for affirming what is in our hearts. It is now our pleasure to uh, invite the commencement speaker to the program. And by the way, this podium uh, was used when the administration building was rebuilt and rededicated in 1912. So it has seen a little over a century of service. It's one of our historical legacies. Coming to the podium now will be Dr. Corey Mantle Bromley, Dean of our nationally recognized College of Education, which has played such an important role in the university's history. As noted in your commencement program, and I invite you to peruse it, Dr. Mantle Bromley earned a bachelor's degree from Utah State University, but her master's and PhD degrees from our own University of Idaho. In 2010, she came from the university in which she was then working, Washington State University, to Idaho. Their loss, our gain. Earlier in her career, she had taught Spanish in Idaho public schools and had joined the faculty of Colorado State University. She has been nationally recognized as an agenda for education and a democracy sc scholar by the Institute of Educational Inquiry and was recently honored with an Excellence in Educational Research Award by the Phi Delta Kappa Society. While she was working in another post at the University of Kansas, she received numerous awards, including the Chancellor's Award for Outstanding Teaching. Here at our university, we have benefited greatly from Corey's vision and energy in extending the educational programs, research, and outreach conducted at the state of Idaho's first College of Education. Please join me in welcoming to the podium our 2013 winter commencement speaker, Dr. Corey Mantle Bromley. honored and well aware that I stand between you and the conferral of your degrees. So I hope to, in just a few short minutes, express my appreciation for what you have accomplished and the importance of the transition that is in front of you. I have had the opportunity of living in six different states in the United States and four different continents across this globe. I have countless lessons that I have learned through those travels and that hopscotch of my life. Some of those lessons have been within the four walls of institutions, and I call those lessons schooling. Some of the lessons and some of the most important lessons I've learned have been outside of school, and I call those education. You leave the University of Idaho with both both the schooling and the education to go out and do fantastic work. Today, I'd like to spotlight the kind of education and learning that I hope you continue for the rest of your lives. I start with my early days. My grandpa, Grandpa Abbott, was five foot three with his shoes on. At his most svelte, he weighed over 200 pounds. Every day he shaved his oversized balding head. He had ears that were bigger than I have ever seen on anybody to this date. After he retired from delivering mail, he was a janitor to make ends meet. Not exactly what you'd call to mind as a sage mentor, and yet I consider him to be my Socrates. I wasn't more than about 10 years old one fall when I said to Grandpa, what do you want for Christmas? His response, a lump of coal. Well, he didn't think about it anymore, but for months I plotted and planned to figure out where you find coal, how I was going to get that lump of coal, and for Christmas morning he unwrapped a beautiful package and inside it was a lump of coal. That started a game that only he and I played. Every fall holiday season, I would ask him the same question, and each year his response was progressively more complex. One year, octopus. Landlocked Utah did not have a lot of octopus. Another year, gooseberry pie. I had no idea what a gooseberry was. Another year, chocolate-covered grasshoppers. Really, Grandpa? His requests sent me to libraries, sent me to specialty food stores, sent me to talk to adults I would never have dared talk to. 
Every year I succeeded in getting him his request. My grandpa taught me, encouraged my curiosity, and taught me that I could accomplish anything I set my mind to. Lots and lots of other people have taught me equally important lessons. My debate coach in high school expressed his disappointment when I was lazy, which I had learned to be by the time I was in 11th and 12th grades. He taught me the importance of doing my best, even, though I, even if I didn't have to do my best. And there are hundreds more. The Yugoslavian shepherd who came across two kids sleeping in his sheep's pathway, we awakened in the woods to bales and sheep staring at our faces probably 12 feet away, 12 inches away from us. Unbeknownst to us, we were in the shepherd and the sheep's trail. He had a bag of peaches. We had salami and bread and together we made the most incredible breakfast I think I've ever had. We also had an incredible conversation with no words in common. He taught me more about nonverbal communication than I can ever learn in a textbook. There was the Mexican truck driver who picked me up, still a teenager, hitchhiking back from living in Guatemala to the United States. He drove me to his destination, which was in central, um, central Mexico, and he drove me to the bus station. He handed me cash, and he said, I'm not leaving until you go into that bus station, buy a ticket to the border, and come and show it to me. I obediently went to the ticket counter, bought my ticket, thanked him profusely. This kind Mexican bus driver taught me to care for strangers and he also taught me an important lesson, don't push your luck. There was my friend Matthew, witty, kind, gay, now long deceased from being one of the earlier carriers of the HIV virus. He taught me to stand up to injustice and bigotry. And then I clearly remember Lisa, one of the very first students I taught when I started teaching high school. Lisa was always sullen, never talked. It was hard to get her engaged in anything. As a new teacher, I didn't know what to do to help her. I discovered over the course of the year that her father and her brothers were sexually abusing her. She taught me a really incredible lesson. How deep is the need for empathy? How deep is the need to understand people and their experiences before you ever dream of judging others? And then comes the University of Idaho, my alma mater. I am thrilled to report to you that I continue learning every day that I'm here, and I continue to be impressed and inspired. Who are my teachers? You are my teachers. Students, faculty, staff at the University of Idaho continue to inspire and teach me. The lessons come quickly to mind. I hadn't been here three days when I was looking for an office, could not find the office, and a young man stopped and asked if he could help. He literally delivered me to the office that I was looking for. I've been on four different university campuses, and that would not happen everywhere. It happened at the University of Idaho. I watch you daily holding the door open for each other as you go into the commons, as you go into other buildings on campus. I am, I, um, just recently, I'm, I'm looking for a tissue here. Excuse me for just a second. I overheard a young woman when I, and this was just several days ago. I was walking past and this young woman said to the person who was with her, now promise me you're gonna go to class today, right? That inspired me. I loved people watching out for each other. I love watching the marching band be the most excited marching band and perform and take such joy at being the best marching band they possibly can be. <laughs> yes. I'm inspired by the dance students who, with the help of people from across campus, 
choreographed and performed the most beautiful memorial for Greg Halloran, who passed away over a year ago. I'm inspired by your ASUI student body president, Max Cohen, who has self-determined rules for when he wears and when he doesn't wear his rather prominent nose ring. I am equally inspired by the president and provost who embrace him, whether he is or isn't wearing his nose ring. I'm inspired by the alumni who keep in contact with each other 30, 50, 40, 50 years after graduating. I'm inspired by those same alumni who give to scholarship funds because someone gave to a scholarship fund that helped them. My message to you is really a simple one. While some of your formal learning has stopped, your education will continue as long as you let yourself be inspired by other people and as long as you open yourself up to lessons. I hope that you are that environmental scientist who helps safeguard our national forests and who cares for those around you. I hope you are that agricultural researcher who helps feed the world while while also nurturing the goodness and the kindness of others. I hope you are that classroom teacher who turns the magic of reading and the magic of understanding numbers and the, the brightness and the light in children, while you also mentor people around you as you look for mentors for yourselves. I hope that you carry the specialness of the University of Idaho with you for the rest of your lives. Be that person who holds doors open for others. Be that person who t stops and, and shows a stranger who has lost the way. Be that person who encourages others to be the best they can be. Now, I've already mentioned that my grandfather finished the eighth grade. My other grandfather and my two grandmothers made it through third grade. My father made it to 10th grade they all were able to get into the middle class because of the jobs that were available at the time. My mother was the one who, once us, the three daughters were in school, said, I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to graduate from college. Her example set an ex showed the, her daughters the way. All three of her daughters now have graduate degrees. All of her grandchildren but one have bachelor's degrees and are finishing graduate degrees. You have that opportunity because, the, because Idaho is not, does not have a rosy picture in terms of the numbers of college graduates in this state. 28% of adults have post-secondary education. By 2018, two out of three new jobs require post-secondary education. You are the state's stars in terms of being able to show others that they can succeed, they can get college graduate degrees, and they can go on and help this changing economy. If you're that first generation graduate in your family, you, like my mother, will change the course of your family's lives. I urge in closing, for you to use your formal schooling to do good and at the same time make a difference in others' lives. I urge you to continue your learning every single day. That is what the University of Idaho, Idaho's, here we go again, founding constitutional land grant and therefore flagship university has prepared you to do. My very best wishes, congratulations, and go Vandals. Corey, thank you for the power of the personal message and the uh, narrative of hope that it contained. Uh, I'd be grateful if you'd uh, come back forward because even though you gave us something that is beyond value and therefore no physical item can uh, comport with it, we would like you to receive this as a memento and an expression of our appreciation for your dedication to the University of Idaho. Thank you. As most of you know, the provost and executive vice president